Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we unfortunately need to talk about the fact that we now have Hurricane Delta and it appears it is likely going to be a major hurricane later today actually. So we're going to need to watch this one very closely as it tracks towards first off the Yucatan Peninsula and then eventually the Gulf Coast as a potential major hurricane. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know which state in the United States do you think will see the most impacts from Hurricane Delta? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at Hurricane Delta on our cone forecast here from the National Hurricane Center, which you should always seek official guidance from them, by the way, uh, absolutely great forecasts, obviously. Uh, and as you can see, there's a big M there by uh, later today, probably about 2 p.m. That means they think this one will be at least a category three by the time we're looking at 2 p.m. on today, Tuesday. So we're expecting uh, impacts to begin later on Friday, potentially there for Louisiana. We'll talk about that in a second. We're expecting major impacts for the Yucatan Peninsula there, including Cozumel and Cancun. I've been to Cozumel. Very, very beautiful. Unfortunately, they're about to deal with a large storm uh, later on tonight through tomorrow morning. This is a very major situation as, as it's going to be likely a Category 3, if not a stronger storm. So Category 4 or 5 can't even be ruled out. With the level of intensification we've seen, rapid intensification, uh, anything is possible. Then it's going to make its way across the rest of the Gulf and hit as a hurricane in Louisiana by about 2 a.m. on Saturday, if not a bit earlier. So it has a lot of time to develop. We're going to be watching it closely. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery, then the spaghetti model guidance, the intensity guidance, and then we're going to start talking about impacts, rainfall, total winds, what we're going to be taking a look at. All right, now here is that satellite imagery, and this is not looking good. You see those pinks? That is extremely tall clouds there, and it's already developing an eye as well. As it's approaching Category 3 status, like I said, uh, likely this afternoon, we will already be taking a look at a Category 3, uh, if not stronger, eventually on. Uh, so we really need to watch this one closely, as it is absolutely bombed out and rapidly intensified. Very impressive uh, speed in the intensity. This, st this storm is not looking good. Let's take a look at that spaghetti model guidance real quickly. And as you can see, in about 48 hours, it's likely going to be hitting the northern tip of that Yucatan Peninsula. There is a few that keep it further offshore of the Yucatan Peninsula. That's what we can all hope for, is that would create lesser impacts for the Yucatan Peninsula, which is expecting very major impacts at that. Uh, but that would allow it to intensify even further so it would be bad news for the United States. So really, it's a lose-lose situation here. Somebody is going to get a worse storm, uh, and, and somebody's going to get lucky here. So it, it really is just an overall terrible situation we're in here. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at our three ensemble models, and then also our intensity guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look, first things first, at our GEFS model here. And as you can see... Uh, we're expecting it likely to hit the Yucatan Peninsula, the northern tip there, but also we have a few members here having it further offshore of the Yucatan Peninsula, so that is certainly a possibility here according to the GEFS. But as you can see, this storm begins to intensify once it's in between the Yucatan Peninsula and likely Louisiana, uh, and it's a very strong storm by time it is hitting Louisiana as it continues to rapidly intensify across the Gulf. That is extremely bad news here if the GEFS was to be correct. Now, let's take a look at our Canadian model, and this is a little bit of a more promising outlook. We don't see those oranges. We don't see those reds. This is indicating a weaker storm. The only bad news here is that, well, this is the worst of the three models, so we need to take it with a grain of salt, although we can all hope that this, this outcome here is the more likely one. And then the European Ensemble Models outlook here, which does have some of those oranges, some of those blues, though, so there's some good and some bad news. It's kind of mixed. The only bad news here is that we would be seeing this storm come on shore basically the same exact spot that Lara came on shore, and they do not need that right now. They do not need back-to-back -back major hurricanes hitting their region. That would be extremely bad news if that was to play out in that fashion. Absolutely devastating if we see two major hurricanes hit the same spot in one season. Uh, that would absolutely be historic 
Speaking of, of historic, we've had the most landfalling tropical systems in the United States this year. Uh, it's it, We've broken the record officially, so we've already broken another record this hurricane season, this absolutely historic hurricane season that we've had, might I add. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that intensity guidance, and then we're going to start talking about uh, the impacts, wind, rainfall, all sorts of things like that. All right, now here is that intensity guidance, and as you can see, uh, I took this earlier this morning. This is from about 2 a.m., so really, uh, this is much outdated. We're a Category 2, approaching Category 3 right now, so we're pretty far ahead of what this map is showing, so don't pay attention to that first 12 hours or so. However, as you can see, a huge bulk of the models show this one reaching well into Category 3 status within the next 24 hours, and a significant amount, four or five of these models, have us reaching category five, or sorry, four, if not five, uh, within the next 48 or 72 hours. Uh, and then we see a significant drop off in intensity at about hours 72 through 84, which is right around the time we're making landfall. Uh, so yeah, this, this is not looking good, guys. This looks like it's going to be our next major hurricane, and it looks like it's going to bring significant impacts, not only to the Yucatan Peninsula, but also to the Gulf Coast of the United States, likely Louisiana at this point, in my opinion, but it could be Texas, could be Alabama, could be Mississippi, could even be Florida. We have a long time to go. These models could certainly shift, so we're going to want to pay attention to the possibility that these models could all be uh, off on the potential track here. That's very crucial with this type of storm. Now, here's the low-pressure location on the European Ensemble model. I wanted to show this so you can see where they all separately as members. So this is not separate storms, obviously. This is separate members of the Ensemble model. Uh, showing different things, and you can see they all kind of have it in that very western Louisiana region. Here's the GFS in Sala model, and as you can see, it's a little bit further eastward. It has varying speeds on when they think it's going to hit. There's some as far back as the middle of the Gulf by the time we're at about Friday at 8 p.m., and then there's some that have it all the way up into uh, Mississippi already, so very varying uh, timing there. And then we see the Canadian ensemble model, which is the furthest east of them all. Uh, and this one shows more of a central or eastern Louisiana impact there. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the impacts for Hurricane Delta, mostly for the United States, but also a little bit for the Yucatan Peninsula as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at our European model, and this is the 10 meter wind gust. So basically this is the near surface wind gust, but this is a high, this is a little bit of a higher elevation because it's a better, uh, a more clear a depiction of the winds. They usually don't have surface winds available. Usually 10 meters is the lowest. So that's why we're using that. As you can see, we're expecting the potential for, well, you can see the maximum down there on the bottom right, but the oranges is indicating anywhere from 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, but the maximum there that we're seeing from this storm is 92 mile per hour wind gusts. So very major storm impacting the very northern tip of, of the Yucatan Peninsula. And here's by time it reaches the Louisiana coast, again, the European model is the one that shows that more western Louisiana impact. The maximum winds here is 99.3 miles per hour. That's that's gusts, remember, but gusts is basically what's going to make the difference here because gusts is what would knock down your trees, do damage. Uh, it, the sustained winds also matter because obviously they can cause damage too, but the gusts is like the maximum winds you're going to see uh, at any point from this storm. All right, now here's the total rainfall on our European model. And basically, the consensus here seems to be that the maximum would be about 5 to 10 inches of rain. But I, would be, I wouldn't be, I would be very surprised to see 15, uh, possibly even 20. We're very far away from when the storm's going to hit, three or four days away. So a lot can change here. We could expect a lot more rain by time. We're about to see the landfall. So it really depends how the next 24, 48 hours plays out with this storm. So stay tuned for, in, uh, for updates on these impacts, of course, from not only direct weather, but also the National Hurricane Center, of course. So here's the GFS's uh, total rainfall. And as you can see, basically the same amount, but further east, which isn't surprising because it had the storm hitting further east. And then here's the Canadian model's forecast, and it's, again, the same amounts, 5 to 10 inches of rain in those browns. However, uh, it's further east once more. Now, you might have noticed that we had a little bit of a uh, lowering of intensity by the coast uh, as it gets closer to Louisiana. Like, the National Hurricane Center did not think it's going to be a major hurricane by time it's hitting. And this is why. We have, some, we have some shear set up near the coast of Louisiana. And if we get lucky, that might stay in place. And what will happen is as that hurricane is about to hit, it might... Uh, be lowering in intensity right before it hits land, which would be really good news to say the least. 
Here we are taking a look at the key messages for Hurricane Delta, and this all is referring to the Yucatan Peninsula uh, of Mexico. So what you're going to want to do is if you live in those regions, pause the video and just read all of this. Uh, and then the very bottom one is actually for Louisiana, so you might want to read that as well uh, if you live in the United States, the Gulf Coast, if you're expecting this storm. So pause this video, read that, and also head to the National Hurricane Center or hurricanes.gov to get more information on that, of course. Here is our direct weather forecast for Hurricane Delta real quickly. And as you can see, we expect it to hit the Yucatan Peninsula, again, maybe within the next 48 hours. And then it's going to cross the Gulf, likely hitting Louisiana, but also could be portions of Texas, could be Mississippi, could be Alabama, could be Florida. The reason my cone is so wide at the end there is because we're so far out. I really feel like this one could shift in where it's, it's likely to head. And really, here at Direct Weather, I like to keep all the options on the table that are possible. And anything within this cone is certainly possible for a landfall. So that's why I chose to kind of go with a wider cone there at the end. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how intense do you think this one will get? And by the way, yesterday we expected maximum a Category 2 or 3. And Jordan Rich said, dude, this storm is already a hurricane. It's going to be a Category 4. There's nothing stopping it now. That's very bold, and I don't think it will for sure be a Category 4. But Jordan Rich is very confident here, so I decided to pick this very bold comment of the day. We'll have to see if it becomes a Category 4. Although I think Category 3 is a little bit more likely, with Category 4 being slightly possible. Category 5 is even on the table at this point. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Bird, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, Mark J, alongside our Platinum patrons, Larry LePan and Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, always be sure to seek official guidance from the National Hurricane Center. Again, be sure to share with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.